Welcome back for another video and today is a video that you guys have been asking for since I got the final quack and today we're going to go over my opinion on it and uh, give you guys an honest review after a season of use and tell you things I like about it, the things I don't like about it and if I would recommend you guys go and purchase one. But before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, I want to let you guys know that I launched a podcast. It's called the Outdoor Limits Podcast. Head over there, check that out, and subscribe to the podcast, as well as join the Facebook group. So there's a Facebook group, it's the Outdoor Limits Podcast group on Facebook. Head over there, request to join, and be a part of the community over there, sharing pictures. I'm wanting to see uh, people posting pictures of the turkeys they shoot this spring. So hop on there, because there's going to be some fun stuff happening on that page. Now let's talk about the final quack. All right. So as you guys probably know, I got the beaver tail final attack back in uh, September. And so this was kind of a spur of the moment purchase. I was like, you know, I really want to get a layout boat. I want a motor on it. I want to be able to go different places this year and uh, travel farther distances without having to paddle a kayak a very long ways. And so I bought this thing and, you know, I was pretty happy with it to start out with and it kind of came with its own set of issues that I encountered and so if you guys either have one of these or you're looking to get one of these hopefully this video helps you out with uh, some of those issues that I encountered you guys might have that as well so first and foremost this layout blind or this layout boat cover is the beaver tail final attack cover it does a pretty good job for what it is. I never had any issues with the tubing for the frames. Uh, I never had any issues with it coming out from underneath the front of the boat. The biggest issues I've had with this cover are back here in the back. And I basically solved that issue, and I've gone over this many times in videos. I solved that issue by just rolling it up and tying it. and setting it back here behind the motor and that kind of kept it from being a big parachute behind the boat when I was driving. Um, another complaint that I have about this is there's no stubble straps up high so you got to figure out some way to cover all this. I never really did. I didn't really notice any big issues with it on the times I took it out. I, I mean I killed quite a few birds out of this thing but um, I really wish it had stubble straps up here because like I mean, it's, it covers up really good, it just, you can't cover the top middle part, which seems a little ridiculous. The stubble straps work great other than not having them up here. I used Final Approach Whoop Grass to uh, cover this thing. I got the mixed kit, tan, brown, and green. I love this stuff. I grassed in my kayak blind with it. That's, it blends in to any prairie marsh that I go to if there's a lot of grass. Um, but yeah. There's the cover, um, so if you have one of these and you're going to put a motor on it, I highly recommend you tie up the blind in the back so then you don't have to deal with it catching a lot of water, dragging you down, and it was kind of dangerous because it was just kind of sliding everything off, so that kind of got annoying. Uh, one other thing that I didn't like about the cover was it just came off too easily. So I can just whip that cover off. I'm not a huge fan of because like there was times when I was hunting and I had to keep pulling that cover up and over these bars and that kind of got annoying so honestly I would say you could probably make a better blind or just as good blind without having to buy that cover now that we got that out of the way we can get down to the meat and potatoes of this boat this boat is eight feet long and like 48 inches wide at the bottom, I think. Um, it's extremely stable, which looking at it, you wouldn't think it's super stable, but you can stand up in this thing. I've stood up and drove it. Um, you just, it's small. So if you're a guy who likes to bring a lot of gear with you on a hunt, you're not gonna be able to fit everything inside the boat. And on those hunts where I needed a lot of gear, I would tow a sled behind this with decoys in it, and then I'd be able to maximize the amount of gear that I can bring with me. On the front, this feature I really like. Uh, it's got two holes in the front to tie a rope to or whatever else you want to tie to it. 
this rope is fantastic. It's the perfect size. I measured it so then if I'm standing up in the boat driving, I'm able to hold on to this just to kind of have an extra sense of security. Or even if I'm driving and I want something to hold on to in front of me, I hold on to that rope. Um, and it's great for if you're trying to drag this thing. Um, just throw this around your body like you do a decoy sled and it slides really well. The bottom of the boat is very similar to a sled. So it, it drags pretty good. And um, I'll get to the back side here in a minute. It's got a cool feature. On the front, there's a nice little lip under here. I wonder if you guys can see it. I'm going to try not to lose my motor there. Yeah, so there's the bottom. There's a nice little lip here you can grab onto. It makes wheeling this thing around very, very easy. I don't know quite what these ridges here on the front are for. I think I read it's for like a, helping your dog get in here, but there's no way you could possibly fit a dog in this thing and hunt out of it. It is just not possible. Um, there's a spud hole on the front. That thing is like a geyser, so when you start driving and it's not covered up, it's gonna spit water right at you. I used that area to mount these lights, and I put a piece of wood under there to elevate the lights a little bit and to cover that spud hole. Now, an issue I had with the lights, which can be resolved if I put a little more time and effort into it, um, without this piece of wood here, the lights were angled down and it was reflecting off of this surface and making it hard to see and I mean it only the lights were lighting up only so far so I put this piece of wood under there to kind of elevate them and that kind of helped out quite a bit uh, with being able to see a little farther distances but you know I feel like on the kayak the lights are better um, it's right on the front there's nothing obscuring it they're at a good angle with this it's kind of mounting it on a downward slope so your lights were automatically pointing downward so that kind of makes it difficult to uh, manage that though so you know it worked it did the job we got the blind doors those are really easy to install on the boat and then um, moving on back here we got the cockpit it's kind of an interesting setup here because there's a you can use this boat different ways so you can use it as a boat like I did with a motor and uh, get to your spots but um, it's also used as like kind of like a pit blind kind of deal. Like you just wheel it out there and you sit in it. So it's not designed to be perfect in all ways. It's kind of like a boat, to, in my opinion, it feels like it's trying to cover a lot of bases and it's not good at many of them. <laughs> um, so inside here I've got the seat. If you're going to buy one of these, get the seat. It makes a huge difference. Uh, you can pop it on and off, lay it down flat, and it gives you a really nice angle to sit in here with. And, um, you know, I was never uncomfortable laying in this boat. It's got foam in the front and the back, so it floats. I've never fully submerged this thing, um, so that'd be kind of an interesting thing to test out. But it's got a lot of foam in it, so it floats really high. You gotta put pins in your backrest because if you don't, the backrest will pop out and then it's, you'll be fighting it the whole time during the hunt. There's another spud hole back here, and then we got the transom. And then in the back, we've got another spud hole to where, like, if you want to stake yourself out, you just throw a stake through there and you won't be floating around in the water. And then we got the transom, and then we have the wheels. Now, if you look down here on the inside of this boat, these go way back in here. I have a lot of space in there. I keep a kayak paddle in there. Um, I'm able to store my shotgun, uh, any kind of spinners, lucky duck, literally anything you want to put in here, there's a big cavity, which I, I liked that a lot. It was able, I was able to carry a lot of stuff, like I've got my jerk rig handle here, um, coffee cups, water bottles, anything. You were able to load, load it down really well. Um, some of my past videos when I've used this boat, I've gone over how I load it out. So head over to those videos if you want to learn more about that. But, uh, so driving the boat, I had to make a seat because sitting down on the floor, it worked, but my arm was way up high and it was kind of difficult to keep control of the motor. So making this little seat, I just, 
used some wood and measured and cut and screwed and made a seat for this thing and it worked great. Um, I was able to store stuff under me. I had to make sure I had a space for my feet, but I'd usually set the seat right about here so then the tiller handle was in the perfect spot. And so I was able to put decoys and bags and everything in here and have a space for my feet. I never put more than like two dozen decoys in this thing. I mean, that's pretty much the capacity that it can hold, which most of the time that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I get, I hunt with two dozen quite a bit. So to drive it, I've got a seat and it just kind of sits up top. And then when I'm done driving, I just stow it away in that little cavity right here and it's out of the way. A couple of things about the inside of this that I don't particularly care for is it's extremely difficult to clean out and if, when you get water in it, because you will going in and out of the boat, it's difficult to get all of that water out because it just doesn't sit level. You're, if you lean it one way, it goes up under the foam on that side and lean it the other way, it goes under the foam on that side. So it's kind of a chore to get all the water cleaned out of this thing and uh, the mud and all the grime and stuff. So um, that's a little thing. Not a big deal. Uh, I would set it out in the sun most of the time and I would dry it out, but you know, it's small. I'm five foot 10 and you know, I don't think this would fit anybody over like six one, honestly. I had a hard time getting my waiter boots under this lip so then I would be able to fit in here. So keep that in mind if you're a bigger guy. All right, now it's time to talk about my favorite part of this boat. And if I'm gonna get rid of this boat, I'm gonna keep this. This is my motor. This is a PPF wood duck and uh, it's got the Predator motor on it. It's six and a half horsepower. And it's a kind of get it in the mail and put it together kit. I did a video putting this thing together when I first got the boat. It was pretty simple, pretty easy. And uh, it's done extremely well. The things I like about this motor is it's not crazy expensive and it's six and a half horse. This is rated for like two and a half horsepower. Uh, so I'm not saying to go out and buy a six and a half and put it on here. I'm saying that I did that. Uh, I, I did it at my own risk. So I think it was plenty of power. It wasn't overpowered at all. Um, I'm going to need to kind of tune this thing up. I think I need to change the plug out. I changed the oil in it already and I just started it up today because it's been sitting for a little while and it's worked great. Um, so if you're looking for a small little long tail kit, uh, this one's not very long at all. Like, let's see, from the motor to the end of the prop, I want to say like four and a half, five feet maybe. I mean, it's really not that long. So. Things I like about this, it was easy to put together, it's an affordable motor, it's got a stainless steel prop, which is fantastic. Uh, I've hit rocks and stumps and logs and all kinds of stuff with it, and uh, it's got a few nicks and dings, but that's to be expected when you're hunting in areas with lots of rocks and stumps and stuff, you're going to hit stuff. So to make this motor work on this boat, I had to flip the transom bracket around. So normally the pin would go, I'll just take this off. Here's another thing I like about that motor. It's only like 65 pounds. So what I would do when I was hunting, I'd get to my spot, take the motor off, hide it in the trees somewhere, and then I won't be having the motor sticking out, making the ducks to me. So with this transom bracket, I had to flip it around backwards. The way these are designed is to be have the hole on the inside and the motor will drop in so then the motor rests on this. So then when, if you let go of the motor, it'll rest on that and it won't go completely vertical. So I had to keep that in mind with uh, driving this thing. I had to be very cautious about that. So it's the little things, man. There's a lot of little things about this boat that just makes me want to not hunt out of it anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm happy with the motor though. I'm going to definitely put that on the next boat that I get, um, especially the layout boat. 
So, as far as the layout boat hunting goes, I love them. I love hunting out of layout boats, whether it's a layout boat like this one or a kayak with a blind on it. Just having that low profile, bringing your cover with you, being able to hide in spots that people can't hide in, it's fantastic and I think that was very useful for me. Another thing I found useful for me with this boat was like I said, I was able to take this out on places that I needed a motor on. Places that would have been a pain in the butt to get to with paddling. And then uh, also on like windy days and stuff, it made getting back a lot easier, especially in colder temps. I've had days paddling that kayak when I'm just like, you know, this is, this is a lot of work and it's dangerous. So having a motor, being able to get back safe and sound was great. This thing is super stable. It handled rough chop pretty well. I mean, I'm happy with it from, you know, being a cheap boat and being able to get out on the water. Um, I'm not going to say I recommend it. So, as you can see in this video, there's lots of little things about this boat that I don't like. But at the end of the day, I shot ducks out of this thing. It was affordable. It got me on the water. And uh, I had some good hunts out of it. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I'm a person, I like to say, like, you get what you pay for. And I think it's totally true with this boat. I got what I paid for. It works, but it's not perfect. And I'm definitely looking to upgrade sometime soon. So that's the Beaver Tail Final Attack. That's my review on it. I would give it two and a half stars. There's definitely worse options out there. Um, I would recommend you know doing some research. If you're looking for a boat that you can wheel in and out of the garage, this is the one to have, man. Like this thing, the wheels were convenient. Uh, I don't even think I talked about the wheels. The wheels made it super easy to wheel in, out of the garage and into the truck bed and out of the truck bed and into the garage and down boat ramps and all that stuff. The wheels were fantastic. But the wheels also kept me from being able to go shallow. Um, so, yeah, that sucked. There's too much stuff about this boat to talk about in one video. So, that's all I got to say about it. It's all right. It gets the job done. I don't recommend it. If I don't get another boat, I'm going to probably hunt out of this thing again. Uh, it's kind of one of those deals. So let me know down in the comments if you guys have a beaver tail final attack and let me know what you guys think about it. What's your setup? And uh, make sure to head over to the podcast, give it a listen, and join the Facebook group. So that's it for today. I hope you guys learned something and you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you on the next one.